Hey guys, Louis here from thelanguagescientist.com and in today's video I'm doing a Rosetta Stone review. So we're going to take a look at the Rosetta Stone program for learning uh, languages, no matter what kind of language you may be trying to learn. And so I've written down my notes on this uh, on these sheets of paper because to be honest for a long time I actually sort of uh, been skeptical of Rosetta Stone not for good reasons necessarily I don't remember why I sort of ignored Rosetta Stone in, in the beginning I think just maybe the fact that it's so mainstream I was a bit skeptical or maybe I tried it out many years ago and I wasn't really convinced of its efficiency but now I actually took a good look I did a lot of research I tried it out uh, you know on my own and I made up my own uh, mind about it now uh, if you're new to this channel uh, my name is Louis um, you know I've learned multiple languages to pretty high levels like English for example this is my second language my native language is French and so I'm going to use this experience as a language learner to evaluate Rosetta Stone so Rosetta Stone in one sentence it's a language learning program uh, online you also have the app that allows you to learn uh, languages using immersion so using pictures and audio as opposed to for example if you're learning Spanish then you're going to be you know you, you'll see a, a sentence in Spanish and you're given the the translation in English no that's not how it works it's going to use uh, audio and it's going to use pictures so that's what they 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 call immersion which is not exactly the way in which I have been using the word immersion on on this channel but that's what they call that's what they call it so you know I've been skeptical of Rosetta Stone for a long time and as it turns out a lot of my suspicions were actually right so I usually don't make uh, videos about uh, programs that I don't like but I'm going to make an exception here I'm gonna be you know straight with you guys I don't really like Rosetta Stone after you know taking a look at it in in depth and I'm going to explain why but I feel like I need to make a video on this because uh, it's so popular so a lot of people are going to be asking me about it so I'm also going to recommend some alternatives at the end of the video for those of you guys who don't want to go ahead and do Rosetta Stone and I'm going to base my my recommendations of these alternatives based on the you know shortcomings of Rosetta Stone all right so let's go back to the website here and so we have the Rosetta Stone website and so this is the, um, the home page and actually Rosetta Stone is very very well known and even the government actually uses Rosetta Stone it's a GSA approved uh, you know tool meaning that the, the US government actually uses Rosetta Stone for you know different departments and it's something that uh, government employees can actually use uh, you know for free I, I would assume it's used in b big companies as well I know it's used in uh, schools as well um, you know depending on the school depending on the program but it's very well known it's been around for I think something like more than 30 years I think it's 1992 or something like that so yeah very very uh, famous program and so you know if you think of it in terms of like uh, well you know it's used for the government it's used with very big companies so it must be effective you know that's what I thought at first to be honest like uh, if the government uses it if big companies uh, use it then you know something has to give I mean it has to be somewhat effective I've come to the conclusion that actually a lot of uh, you know the companies in the government they're not necessarily looking for like the most efficient language learning program but a lot of the features that they're looking for is something that well you know Rosetta Stone uh, provides them with a way to actually monitor what what you know how much their teams actually study and the progress of their teams and stuff like that so it's not only about efficiency so just because the government and you know big companies use Rosetta, Rosetta Stone to train their employees does not mean that it's actually better than other tools out there all right, so now I'm going to talk about the sort of the core of Rosetta Stone, which uh, which are the lessons. So the lessons, and here this is an example. Here uh, I'm just showing you that uh, you um, the uh, a typical sort of lesson on the screen, but Rosetta Stone lessons are essentially sort of like uh, a series of drills based on images 
and uh, recorded audio. So you're going to spend most of your time, uh, you know, doing those drills and listening to a word or a phrase and repeating that word or that phrase, as you can see here on my screen, and then trying to match that word or phrase with a corresponding image. So there are two sort of main types of exercises, and I'm showing you uh, the first type here. So you're shown a word, una niña. So this is I'm taking the example of Spanish because Spanish is it's pretty popular for you know uh, U.S. people to learn. And so uh, typically on this page, the sentence una niña will be you know read to you, and then you need to repeat it here with uh, you know the they have their pronunciation grading tool. I'm going to talk about that in more detail. But so you repeat here una niña, and here it's going to do the same thing un niño. And then you repeat it, and that's basically it. And so, you know, uh, Rosetta Stone is expecting you to actually, you know, uh, learn Spanish or wh whatever languages it is that you want to learn through this kind of association. You're hearing stuff, you're seeing the images, and your brain makes the connection. Uh, I think the argument, and a lot of times, uh, what you see in the Rosetta Stone, uh, you know, like promotional uh, videos, is they say, well, this is. This is the way in which you learned your first language. And so you're know, making associations, not necessarily like having a translation. Uh, I think this argument, you know, falls short in many ways. But, um, you know, learning through immersion in the sense that like learning without translations and just having associations, you know, with images and audio, uh, it can work. It does work. I mean, it, it really does. But there's nothing wrong with actually using translations. I'm going to talk about that in more detail later, but I think like the basic premise of Rosetta Stone is not necessarily uh, true. Like it, learning through association and not giving translations, it's not necessarily the most effective stuff. And I've talked about this in my um, deep dive on vocabulary learning. All right, so let's go back to the website. So this is the first type of drill. And the second type of drill is going to be something like this. You're going to be read like a sentence or a word, una mujer. And then you need to click on the proper image. So they give you an example here, una mujer and un hombre. So you are to determine here, una mujer, well, it looks like a woman. Un hombre, well, here, this is a, a man. So I'm determining that una mujer, the sentence that is read here out loud is the woman this equals this equals this all right so this is a type of association and the type of drills that you're going to be doing with uh rosetta stone and you know once again i feel like the the main premise here is that well you know doing immersion instead of doing just you know like uh normal drills with translations here having the images associated to their meaning in spanish or whatever language you're trying to learn in your mind is somewhat in is somehow superior to actually showing you you know una mujer equals a woman like in english uh and once again, this is really not true. The, the research actually shows that having um, a translation in your native language is, allows you to have the association made actually faster. There's absolutely no crime in this. All right, so now let's talk about uh, true accents. I'm going to go back on my screen. And true accent is Rosetta Stone's, um, I'm not sure how to, to, to call this. It's like a technology, essentially. And it's, um, I'm going to go back here to slides, but as you can see on the drills, you're going to be required to actually pronounce the words and sentences that are being presented to you. And so true, um, true accent is the technology from uh, Rosetta Stone that is supposed, supposedly it's going to detect whether or not you have a uh, good pronunciation when, you know, speaking uh, those words and phrases. Now, I, I I can tell you right away that, you know, I, um, I don't want to criticize it too much, but it's not as accurate as they make it, you know, make it sound. It's definitely not perfect. And there's a lack of sort of like uh, feedback. They're not going to tell you like, okay, uh, uh, you know, you said it wrong, but here is what you need to correct or here is where you actually failed. 
So, you know, I think they make a big deal out of this, you know, true accent technology with the copyright here and all that. But at the end of the day, it's not as great as they make it out to be. All right, so um, now I just want to talk about my overall sort of verdict on Rosetta Stone, and then we're going to move on to uh, alternatives because I think you've got it. You got it at this point. I'm not a big fan of Rosetta Stone. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about here in that conclusion is that Rosetta Stone has a lot of drills and stuff, but it's not going to present you with much, you know, explicit like grammar instruction which is I feel like it's very fashionable these days with online tools and stuff it's like you're doing like immersion you're doing flashcards you're doing all those kinds of sentences and and drills kind of kind of stuff but you're not actually giving actual you know grammar instructions and uh, I, I definitely feel like the textbook approach of having like walls of text with a bunch of very advanced grammar it's not really productive and you know the adherence the likelihood that you're actually going to complete that kind of program you know it's very low a lot of people are going to give up but I think you know explicit grammar instruction actually has its place and it should be in a language learning program and Rosetta Stone just does not have sufficient grammar at all now but the second point I want to make here is that, well, you know, again, Rosetta Stone, it's not that, uh, I'm not saying that it's uh, inefficient and it's not for every, it's not something that you should consider. But my point is that when I see this, you know, it gets very repetitive very quickly. And so it's not entertaining and not particularly efficient. So to me, I don't really see, I mean, you'd have to have a very good reason to actually choose Rosetta Stone, you know, when you have so many alternatives on the market right now. You know, I'm, I've said it in multiple videos, but I'm not necessarily about like trying to find the most efficient method for learning a language. I think that adherence and, you know, the fact that a program is, is, is suitable for you, it's like uh, sustainable, it's something that you want to do, it's almost like more important than having something that is efficient. But with Rosetta Stone, I'm not, I mean, it's not entertaining to me at least. And I don't find it particularly efficient based on my experience and my knowledge of second language acquisition uh, research. So um, that that's basically it. Now, the third point here is that there's not going to be, a, uh, you know, translations. Again, it works with associations. So um, let me show you, show it to you again. That's how it works. You know, you if you want to learn Spanish, you're only going to be using Spanish there's not going to be much English translation now to be fair there is a new I think a feature called uh, that you can uh, toggle on or off it's going to be like a toggle you know translations or stuff like that but you know the overall sort of um, philosophy of Rosetta Stone is not using the translations but doing you know association and really a pure immersion in Spanish now, uh, the last point I want to make is that they do advertise like uh, coaching and you know live lessons on their website, which seems great because it's like um, if you take if you have a subscription to Rosetta Stone, the live lessons are going to be uh, held you know like in parallel with the lessons that you find you currently find yourself at, but the the coaching like the live lessons. Are actually an entirely like separate thing so uh, if you get the Rosetta Stone subscription plan uh, you're not going to get um, you know the live lessons which is kind of a shame and the live lessons are actually kind of expensive all right now now let me move on to the alternatives because uh, I'm not really a big fan of Rosetta Stone nothing wrong if uh, if you find it entertaining if you find that it's super efficient for you then go ahead but I suspect that for the majority of people that's not going to be the case all right, so my first uh, alternative, uh, the first thing I would recommend that you use instead of Rosetta Stone is Rocket Languages. And here I'm assuming that you're a beginner in whatever language you're trying to learn. Again, here on my screen, you can see that uh, I'm taking the example of, you know, Rocket Spanish, but they have a bunch, you know, they have 14 language uh, languages from which you can learn. Uh, the difference between uh, Rocket Languages and uh, Rosetta Stone is that with Rocket Languages, you actually will have all of the grammar that you need uh, to learn a language. So there is, you know, extensive grammar, but it's still, you know, like digestible chunks. And so you're going to get all of that. 
Uh, Rocket Languages is also going to use actual conversations to uh, get you speaking. Like with Rosetta Stone, it's always going to be words or sentences. But with Rocket Languages, it's entire conversations that you're going to take part in. And I've talked about this in other videos. You can check out the reviews. Oh, and I'm going to include the, the, um, the links in the description of this video to all of the alternatives that I'm suggesting right now. So check out, you know, Rocket Languages and the suggestions. I'm going to put a link in the description. Now with Rocket Languages, the third point I want to make here and the reason why it's a bit better alternative to uh, Rosetta Stone is because even though it can get boring, like a lot of programs you can actually do a lot of the lessons on the go as a matter of fact for you know it depends on the program but for the most part about 50% of the lessons you're going to be able to do them uh, on the go like you can just download the audio for offline listening and do the lessons just like that so even though it's boring adherence is going to be much higher it's going to be much more sustainable I just want to add one last comment here with rocket languages I think it's important that you use a uh, flashcard program like Anki for example for you know space repetition to really retain what you're what you learn in the long term all right now my next alter alternative to Rosetta Stone is going to be innovative language and so um, this is a very good company actually I've been learning with them for a long time I feel like um, it's not as structured as you know something like Rosetta Stone and uh, rocket languages certainly but just because of the sheer quantity of content of actual like conversations in whatever language you're trying to learn that they have on the website it's really really worth it and it's pretty affordable so uh, innovative language actually has uh, multiple websites like japanese pod 101 a korean class 101 french pod 101 uh, spanish pod 101 or was it spanish class 101 i don't remember exactly but they have all of these websites you know and, and it's the same company and you have hundreds of lessons they present all of the grammar that you need to 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 understand it's not necessarily as a linear as rocket languages but still it's going to be there and there are tons of actual conversations in the language that you're trying to learn like you you get hundreds if not thousands of hours of actual conversations in spanish and chinese and french and korean and japanese and so uh, just because of that, just because of the format, it's going to be much, much less boring than something like, you know, Rosetta Stone or even, uh, you know, um, Rocket Languages. So it's really not boring and you get tons of content. And the flashcard system, I always talked about, you know, flashcard because it's very important to get that space repetition system. It is embedded, it is, you know, integrated in the website, it's integrated with the lessons. All right, now let me talk about the last alternative here, and it's going to be uh, Pimsleur. And I know that a lot of people have, um, uh, how do I put this? A lot of people have their own opinions on Pimsleur, but I think that a lot of people who criticize Pimsleur only have done like a few lessons and then they just, you know, give up. And the thing with Pimsleur is is like it's 100% audio and like Rosetta Stone it does not have any if you know maybe it has a little bit of like uh, grammar explanations but for the most part you know it's much more like um, it's much more intuitive it's much more like you're just listening to conversations and you're prompted to actually participate in the lessons and stuff like that so it's not as structured as a textbook, that's for sure. The thing with Pimsleur is that even though it's an unconventional uh, way to learn a language, people are having excellent results in just five months. Like I have tons of uh, people, you can you know watch my videos on like the Pimsleur reviews on pretty much like half of them at least. There are always people saying, "Hey, look, I, I completed the uh, you know Pimsleur for French, Pimsleur for, for Spanish, or Pimsleur for you know whatever language." and I can have conversations in that language after finishing the program. Just the other day, I had a guy uh, uh, leave a very, very long comment on my, I think it was Pimsleur Japanese video, and he said like, hey, you know, um, 
years ago I actually completed the Pimsleur, Jap uh, Pimsleur Japanese program he actually did only 50 or 60 percent of the program and then he went to Japan and he could actually use the language and go around the country and years after doing the program which I assume it was a long time ago because he said that he was using like the audio uh, CDs uh, audio uh, how do you do, how do you say this audio CDs I think that's what it's called but he did the CDs and then even now he can still remember uh, a lot of the stuff that was taught in the program. So yeah, Pimsleur is somewhat unconventional, but I can tell you from experience it works. It works very well and um, uh, there's no grammar, but you can always complement it with a textbook. All right, so that's pretty much it for this uh, review of Rosetta Stone. I hope that uh, it sort of opened your eyes to you know, well, at least my opinion on uh, Rosetta Stone. And um, if you want to find out more about, about me, you can go to the languagescientist.com. Again, for all of the alternatives, I have included a link, uh, multiple links in the description of this video. And I'll see you next time.